Most of the bass fishing we do in the North Country is on lakes we classify as mesotrophic bodies of water. But today, the lake we're fishing would be classified as eutrophic. These types of lakes carry large nutrient loads, typically have dirty water for massive algae blooms, and are often shallow. These are very fertile systems. They grow fish fast, but are often susceptible to summer or winter kill from lack of oxygen. Common fish species here are bullheads, carp, golden shiners, fathead minnows, pike, panfish, perch, and largemouth bass. The lake also has tremendous bass habitat in the form of wood, various types of weed cover, bog edges, and even rock. Fisheries like this, with ample habitat that can survive for a decade or more without a kill, can produce the biggest bass anywhere in the north. Ooh, there you go, Al. Big boy? Yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels good, <laughs> it feels good. I got it. Feels good. Yeah. Oh, here's the right stuff. Oh, Jer, look at her. Look at her size. She's coming out again. That's oh, here she fish, comes. Man. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh man. Hell. What a tanker, man. Oh, what a tanker that is. All right, I'm gonna mark the spot. Yeah, punch her in. Oh, come here, mama. <laughs> oh, boy, she's a big fish. Woo! Oh, how's that baby look, huh? Man, oh man. Jeremy and I are doing something we really, really enjoy doing. It's the peak of summer. We're flipping northern milfoil and we're throwing soft baits and jigs. And this is the time of the year to do it in this stuff for really, really, really big bats. Man, that was a big fish, Jer. <laughs> you know, milfoil is really a unique a weed. It grows in many parts of the country. You find it in lakes, rivers, reservoirs. Hey, in my home state of Minnesota, it's actually a problem on many bodies of water. And uh, it just choked out the natural vegetation. However, no matter where you fish, anywhere in the country, if it's summertime and you've got good beds of milfoil, I guarantee you, you got some of the biggest bass in a lake living in them. Ooh, look at that. Whoa. <laughs> she had the right attitude. That was right. You know, I just felt that little hard she spot. She had the right, right attitude. I just felt a little bit hard. She went plunk <laughs> and dumped it, and I let it sit, and she ate it again. That was fun. If you've ever been to a lake that appears as though it has endless acres of milfoil, you've probably asked yourself, where do I start? It's a good question because tackling massive milfoil flats is intimidating. Here's how we do it. We begin by identifying the biggest structures the lake has on a map. We look for points, pockets, or distinct contour changes on those structures. Then it gets down to the dirty work, fishing it. If the area you selected on the map has lots of moss or algae growing on the milfoil, it's usually best to pass. There may be bass here, but it's nearly impossible to fish through without hanging up. Finding clean milfoil is the key. Then feel with the lead and watch your sonar for composition changes in the bottom. It's amazing how much bass love hard bottom in these milfoil beds. Always mark the spots on your GPS because sooner or later the bass will show up there. This northern milfoil like this gets, you know, it gets a lot more patchy than the Eurasian milfoil. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, it gets pretty fishable. Yeah, you know, and then we, we, we got those big clumps scattered all through here so you can kind of cast, at least on this spot. Some of those other spots, it was so dense, like those humps out there, we had to get right up on top of them. But this stuff grows, uh, you know, it's, it's a little more fishing, fishing friendly than the Eurasian milfoil.